Remember when our embedded designs had nice little MCUs that just worked quietly inside our devices? They blinked lights, turned things on and off, maybe monitored switches or sensors or whatever. And that was about it. Now, though, our MCUs have grown up and they're ready for college. They want to connect to the world, send stuff off to the cloud, monitor things wirelessly. And that means, yep, you guessed it, Bluetooth. Get ready, little MCU. This is going to be tricky. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Bringing Bluetooth into your embedded design is no easy task. And Bluetooth 5 brings a whole bunch of new cool capabilities that make adding Bluetooth even more compelling than ever. My guest today is Michael Sarpa from Renaissance, and we're going to talk about the power of Bluetooth 5 and how to take advantage of it in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Renaissance's Bluetooth 5 solutions. Hi, Michael. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're talking about cloud connectivity, Bluetooth 5, and a whole lot more today. But before we dive in, there has been a lot of changes within the role of MCU in our system design, right? Yeah, absolutely. Typically in the past, MCUs have controlled internal operation and just had to interface directly with the user through buttons or other display functions. But in today's society, now we need to connect to the cloud. People want to be able to see on their smartphone exactly how much energy they're using, how much soap they're using, et cetera, for a washing machine application. So the washing machine MCU now needs to be able to communicate all that devices through the cloud. And one typical way to do that is using Bluetooth communication. Bluetooth is a fairly low power and easy to use standard and it can easily handle point-to-point connectivity to the cloud so that those results can then be displayed on your smartphone. Okay, so we've talked about Bluetooth a couple different times here on Chalk Talk, but how exactly did we get to Bluetooth 5? What did the evolution look like? Yeah, so Bluetooth has been continually evolving over the years, primarily in the area of improving speed. Each new generation of Bluetooth from Bluetooth 1 all the way through to Bluetooth 5 today has just enhanced the amount of features available and also enhanced the throughput performance. And one of the things that you'll see a little later with Bluetooth 5 is it also adds some additional functionality that can even increase the performance even greater. And later on, we'll talk also about Bluetooth Mesh, which moves Bluetooth away from just a point-to-point network, but allows you to interface to multiple devices, which can really expand the capability of Bluetooth. So, Michael, a lot of people claim Bluetooth capability, but that can mean a lot of things, right? Exactly. Yeah, the Bluetooth 5 spec makes a lot of the features optional, and many of the advanced features are not included on a lot of simple Bluetooth devices. But the RX23W supports all of the advanced features, and you can see them shown here. Some of the really key ones are the LE or long range which allows much wider area coverage, so you have further distance between the MCU and its connect point as well as other things like channel selection algorithm, which actually reduces collisions in heavy traffic situations. So a lot of these new features allow you to increase performance even beyond the standard Bluetooth 5 specification. Now, I know that throughput with Bluetooth 5 has gotten even better, but what kind of results should we be seeing with Bluetooth 5? Yeah, the results are dramatic. I mean, we're only comparing here with Bluetooth 4.1, which is the most recent spec before Bluetooth 5. And you see the throughput is over 20 times as much. So the throughput in the range of 26 kilobits per second with Bluetooth 4 can jump all the way up to 464 kilobits per second with Bluetooth 5. You're doubling the connection from 1 megabyte per second to 2 megabytes per second, but you can see the throughput is dramatically increased. So a 2x increase in the connection speed results in more than a 20x increase in throughput performance. Okay, so Michael, how do I go about implementing Bluetooth 5 into my next design? So one of the things the 23W does is it allows you to combine the functionality of the MCU with the functionality of the Bluetooth communication. So in most applications today, you select a low-end microcontroller, combine it with a Bluetooth chip, and then create the interface yourself. But this, the RX23W does that all for you. So not only do you get quite a powerful RX23 level MCU with lots of capability, lots of flash, lots of advanced features, It also has the Bluetooth communication completely built in within the device. So there's no need to try and tune between the MCU and the Bluetooth device. Everything is already connected and ready to go. 
And we also provide all of the Bluetooth software and the Bluetooth source code to allow you to implement Bluetooth right away. Michael, how does the RX23W compare with other Renaissance MCUs? Our RL78 family, which is a 16-bit microcontroller family, has a part called the G1D, and that was Bluetooth 4.2 compliant. So that's a good, nice little chip. But as we saw in the previous slide, with that 20x increase in throughput performance, jumping to the RX23W can result in significantly higher throughput performance. It also is a faster CPU. It has more flash, more SRAM. So just overall more capability, as well as additional peripherals like cap touch and also security is now added. One of the things that also comes along with communicating with the cloud is the need for security to control that information. And that is implemented on the RX23W as well. And we will be introducing further devices in Bluetooth family as we move forward with some of our new technologies as well. So can we get into the nuts and bolts of the RX23W? What kind of stuff is under the hood? What we did with the RX23W, we have a standard MCU called the RX231. And we basically adopted the feature set of the RX231 and added the capability of Bluetooth. So this is a high-featured, kind of a mid-range performance MCU running at 54 megahertz with the RX V2 core, which is a mid-range MCU core. We have significant flash capabilities up to 512 kilobytes, SRAM and data flash as well. We have a host of communication peripherals from I2C to SCI to SPI. You can see the down on the left side is the Bluetooth specifications. That's where all the code is held for all the Bluetooth capability. We have a number of analog functions, a lot of system functionality as well, a wide variety of timers, and a lot of safety features. This product can also support CapTouch interface. So if you want to interface to buttons or sliders in your washer or dishwasher application, it supports that as well. And I mentioned the security aspect. So we do also include AES encryption a random number generator, and a unique ID so that you can control the information passing through this chip. The device is offered in a couple of different packages, a small 56 QFN at 7x7, and then a very small BGA85 at 5.5 by 5.5 millimeters. Okay, so Michael, with a lot of simple Bluetooth chips, the antenna needs to be tuned using external circuitry. So is that the case here? No, exactly. We pull all of that tuning circuitry inside the chip, so the antenna is fully tuned. There's no need for any external capacitors or any other functionality. The only thing you'll need is a crystal to drive the clock, and beyond that, no other external circuitry is required. Okay, so Michael, what kind of applications are you seeing in this space? Some of the low-end Bluetooth capability typically is just what we call a Bluetooth communicator. So it does simple Bluetooth communication, but really doesn't include all of the functionality that's included in the RX23W. To be able to figure out what's going on with your sensors, get that data processed, get that data packaged together and ready to be processed and sent through the Bluetooth communication. So the RX23W kind of provides a lot of functionality beyond what a typical Bluetooth communication device will offer. And still does, of course, all the Bluetooth communication, but adds all of that functionality required for a lot of higher end applications. And the key goal through all of that is to achieve the highest throughput performance so that you have no waiting, no delays as the data is sent up to Bluetooth and you can see it real time on your smartphone or, or other device. Okay, so let's talk more about applications and Bluetooth mesh you mentioned earlier. This would be appropriate here, right? Yeah, absolutely. Bluetooth mesh, I think, is one of the ways that the Bluetooth community is trying to move beyond just a simple point-to-point -point network. That's been one of the limitations in Bluetooth and has spawned the result of other things like Zigbee, LoRa, and other communication protocols that allow a mesh type application. So now that Bluetooth has adopted mesh, and again, the 23W does support all of the Bluetooth mesh extensions, this allows you to communicate. Say you have a bank of meters in a neighborhood, you could have all those meters communicating at the same time through a mesh network to one host to track all the data in, like, a, let's say, a neighborhood or an industrial application, a factory with multiple communication points. Okay, Michael. So what kind of solutions does Renaissance offer in this space? We try to make it as easy as possible to get up and started with the RX23W. So as we do with all MCUs, we provide a reference kit and a starter kit. So typically the reference kit is a lower end, more inexpensive kit to get started quickly. The starter kit is a higher end kit that provides full functionality. So those are standard offering with any MCU device and with all the Renesis MCU devices. The addition you need in this chip is to be able to provide all of the Bluetooth capability. 
So we have a Bluetooth trial tool suite, which we'll talk about in just a minute. As I mentioned earlier, we provide a BLE protocol stack. So that is all fully done and dusted and tested so that you can use it immediately. And then we provide other development support tools and smartphone applications. And as we move forward, we'll be adding targeted solutions for various market applications like home appliance, business automation, and healthcare. Cool. So an important part of any Bluetooth solution is the software. So what does that part of the puzzle look like? It gets a little complicated here, but hopefully we've color-coded it to make it easy to follow. Everything in blue is provided directly by Renesis, as well as everything in green. So the object code is provided in blue, the source code provided in green. So you don't have to do any of the development of a controller or host stacks. All the profiles are defined. All you have to worry about is any customized profiles that you want to add, as well as any specific user applications. We offer a tool called the QE tool for BLE, and that's an easy-to-use tool that allows you to adjust and create those custom profiles and user applications. But the key is that you know all the groundwork's been done and all those programs are there and ready to go, so you just need to get in and, and start customizing for your specific application. So what if I want to try out the RX23W for my next design? Do you guys have any eval tools to help me along the way? As I mentioned, we have the RX23W kits. So once you get one of those boards, you can easily plug that into a PC and start developing with the 23W. Because of the additional functionality of Bluetooth, we created three new tools that really help you evaluate and optimize your Bluetooth performance. The first is called the RF evaluation tool, and that just allows you to look at the RF performance make sure that you're certified with any radio requirements, and just tune the system to be just perfect. The Beacon tool allows you to use some of those extended features we talked about earlier, so some of the advertising features and other features that you may not be familiar with if you've used a standard Bluetooth communicator. You can use that tool to optimize those new capabilities. And then the data transmission tool allows you to incorporate the security that's provided in the 23W and make sure that all your communication through Bluetooth is secure if you want to use coding to be able to protect that information. That tool allows you also to see your data throughput and measure that accurately. All right, Michael. Well, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Sure. Ultimately, the RX23W is targeted for higher-end applications requiring Bluetooth. So when you need a little bit more capability than just beyond a Bluetooth communicator, you need an an MCU that has a lot of features, that has a lot of capability, that has big flash and SRAM capabilities, but has the Bluetooth integrated. You want something that's nice and easy to use, quickly get up to speed. We did want to let you know also that kits and sample devices are available now. And one of our key partners, our e-commerce distributor, Mauser, has all these kits in stock now. So if you'd like to get started, please contact your local Mauser office or visit the website at www.mauser.com to get started today. All right, Michael. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks so much. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Bluetooth 5 solutions from Renaissance. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.